All right, it looks like it's live streaming now, so we should be good to start whenever you're ready. The live stream is working. Thank you so much. Perfect. All right, thank you. Yep, good luck, y'all. Okay, so is everyone good? Sorry, can you give us just like 30 more seconds? You got it. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Everyone's good. We affirm the U.S. has always been a case study in conquest. Georgia 19, the U.S. was imperial from the very moment a band of English aristocrats in search of gold led to the Jamestown. From 1607 to 1897, Americans destroyed countless natives' people from sea to shining sea. They proceeded to conquer the northern third of Mexico, snatch the Philippines, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and a slew of Pacific islands. And after emerging from the Second World War unscathed, the U.S. saw global hegemony. Enemies might have changed from red communists to brown terrorists, but empire is perhaps the only true truly bipartisan national endeavor. And oil is the blood of our empire, Jones 12. Middle Eastern oil has enchanted global capital since the early 20th century. The American Romans began in the 1930s when geologists discovered oil in the eastern shores of Saudi Arabia. Enchantment turned into obsession. Preserving the flow of oil has proven costly in terms of both blood and treasure. And the military investment just isn't worth it. Gaffney 18. US military spending has been largely devoted to protecting oil by supporting compliant leaders. Companies bought research, resource rich lands cheaply and waited decades to develop them for profit required Profit required suppressing democratic impulses in dozens of nations, a giant subsidy to companies. Business ties have embroiled the United States in military action almost every year of the 20th and 21st centuries. But the spoils are carefully hoarded by corporations. Instead of treating the Seventh Fleet as a private service to the oil companies in the Persian Gulf, the cost could be paid for by companies. And the impacts, there are three. First is direct violence. Lucas 15. The United States has been responsible for the deaths of between 20 and 30 million people. The Germans chose not to know. We cannot allow history to say this about our country. Second is climate extinction. Hedges 19. We have begun the sixth great mass extinction driven by a 150-year binge on fossil fuels. Ultimately, feedback mechanisms will accelerate the devastation and there will be nothing we can do to halt the obliteration. These corporations are forces of death. Three, structural violence. Jackson 12. National security is one big con designed to distract you from poverty, inequality, and structural violence of capitalism. You're far more likely to die from a lack of healthcare than terrorism. This display is meant to convince you that these these threats are really, really serious. Globally, poverty and preventable disease kills tens of millions of people needlessly every year. On to the role of the ballot. The role of the ballot is to vote for the debater who best adopts an attitude of epistemic disobedience to dominant security paradigms. Practically, this means rejecting appeals to security experts used to justify violence. Jackson 15. There is a normative responsibility to adapt an attitude of epistemic disobedience to the dominant paradigm. Delinking of the unknown and the imperative to act. Challenging the privilege held by security experts and the material sacrifices we are prepared to take to rid society of terror. Prefer a role of the ballot for three reasons. First is advocacy skills. Contradicting official justification give students the tools to defend people in the real world. Jackson 15. The employment of academic research to contradict official justifications provides an evidentiary base to win legitimacy for change. There's an important role for individuals to publicize the nature and extent of counter-terrorist activities. Groups use this information to provide legal support for victims and challenge governmental programs. Second is judge intervention. Dominant paradigms shape subconscious thought. Bark 17. Many laboratory studies have found that when adult liberals experience physical threat, their political attitudes became more conservative. A simple score of Purell made them feel safe from immigrants. All of us believe that our political attitudes are based on reason and values, but we also need to recognize subconscious motivations. 
three, censorship. Corporate capitalists are literally shaping the literature base. Hedges 18. The abolition of net neutrality and the use of algorithms have given the corporate state the power to destroy freedom of speech. Search traffic to the world socialist website has been reduced 75% and the reductions coincided with algorithms imposed by Google to fight fake news. The most popular search terms include socialism today elicit little or no traffic. This is an ominous march to an Orwellian world. Justified in the name of combat and terrorism is designed to prevent a distressed public from accessing the language to understand corporate imperialism. Thus we affirm. Okay, we're going to take some props. All right, that was 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. Wait, sorry, we're actually going to take like 10 more seconds. Okay, Shreyas, can you Wait. mute yourself? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait one second. I'm um, on like 1% battery. Okay, that was 40 seconds total. All right, everyone good? All right. Zoe, can you mute yourself on the FaceTime? Charlotte Latin negates. Contention one is curbing Iran. Alexander 19 of the Hill writes, Iran has undertaken ter terrorist and belligerent attacks for the better of four decades, while the American military has responded by countering Iranian aggression. To get a seat at the negotiating table, Maloney 19 of Brookings writes, Iran's provocations and aggressiveness are an attempt at good cop, bad cop. The successive show of force, Iranian hardliners hope, will force international bargaining with the nation. In fact, Riley 20 of CNN reports that Iran plans to use the death of Soleimani as an excuse to disrupt shipping in the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. Iran's closing of the strait would stop trade throughout the region, hurting both the U.S. and its global partners. Fortunately, Baldor 20 of Military Times writes that the U.S. military presence has established stability in the region, decreasing the level of harassment in the strait. Without U.S. military presence in the Gulf, Iranian attacks would disrupt shipping. Iran has repeatedly attacked oil ships passing through the Strait of Hormuz, causing oil prices to spike. Snow 19 of the Military Times writes that Iran was behind numerous attacks over the summer of 2019 and attacked Saudi oil fields in September. Thus, U.S. military presence is key to curbing Iran's a bullying of the oil supply, especially against smaller neighboring nations. Snow writes that although Iranian navies and armed forces threaten oil ships passing through the region, the U.S. protects the strait with its own marine units. He continues that last year, units were able to down Iranian drones. The impact is economic devastation. The OEC finds that 95% of Iraqi exports and 83% of Saudi exports are crude oil. Disturbed 20 of Forbes finds that 70% of Saudi governmental revenue comes from oil. The strait is necessary to protect the economies of the Gulf countries and even a partial blocking destroys their economies. Kraus 12 of NY Times warns that a closing of the strait would cause oil prices to skyrocket 50% or more within days, and even a partial blocking of the strait could push the price of gas to over $4 and the price of a barrel to over $100, sending shocks across the global economy. Lucas 10 finds that for developing nations like those in Central Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, increasing prices from $38 a barrel to $100 a barrel led to 16 to 22% increases in poverty for developing nations importing oil and a 23% increase in poverty in the Middle Eastern 
Western states exporting oil. The World Bank 15 finds lower oil prices help lower inflation in developing African countries, allowing central banks to keep rates steady. Lower oil prices led to increased consumer spending and sustained economic growth. Most importantly, lower oil prices allowed under-resourced African nations to cut fossil fuel subsidies to alleviate budget pressure and reallocate energy funding to help benefit the poor. The ODI 15 quantifies further that having oil prices led to 14% reductions in malnourishment, mostly in developing nations. Contention two is terrorism. DUEC 15, a foreign policy research institute, explains that in 2011, the U.S. made a costly mistake by withdrawing troops from Iraq prematurely. As a result, ISIS was able to instigate a bloody civil war. Statista finds that the number of deaths due to terrorism in 2016 reached almost 10,000. With U.S. counterterrorism efforts, that number fell to 1,500 by 2018. However, ISIS is not dead. Martinez 20 of ABC News explains that al-Baghdadi's death has not disrupted the militant structure or operations. Fortunately, Martinez continues, ISIS has struggled to attack U.S. or U.S. Iraqi coalition forces. Pollock 20 of Washington Institute quantifies that ISIS has up to $300 million in reserves and is reorganizing underground in Iraq. In the final nine months of 2019, the group was able to conduct 867 terrorist attacks. Keel 20 of the Hill writes that a withdrawal of military presence would mean an ISIS resurgence, given that most counterterrorism operations in the country are coalition-led and the U.S. gives air, ground, and reconnaissance support. There are two impacts. The first is a loss of lives. Pollock estimates that both the size and severity of ISIS attacks would increase with U.S. withdrawal in Iraq. To quantify during the Iraqi civil war, casualties from terrorism reached nearly 30,000. The second is a humanitarian crisis. The UNHCR writes that as a result of the ISIS surge, 3 million Iraqis have been internally displaced, another 260,000 forced to flee the country, 2.3 million people lack food, water, and safe shelter, millions of children have been separated from their families, contributing to higher levels of trauma and stress, recruitment into armed groups, and exploitation. About 2.1 million children cannot, can't access essential services because of lost documentation, and about 2.6 million do not have education because of a lack of resources. Thus, we negate. Okay, good for cross. Yeah. I'll take the first question. So when the judge casts the ballot for the pro or the con, does that actually mean that the resolution happens in the real world? Do we actually pull the troops from the Middle East? Uh, that's not a question of what debate is. Debate is we act as policymakers and we pretend like we're in that position. Answer my question. If you affirm or negate, does that actually mean that the resolution materializes in the real world? Uh, no, but a question Thank of debate you. isn't, no, wait, 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 this is really important. The question of debate isn't materialization, but us putting ourselves in the shoes of policymakers in order to make those decisions in the real world. But I have a question for you. Why is that good? Why, why is that? Why, why do I want to be like, why would I want to be a policymaker? Uh, because you engage in the activity of debate in order to put yourself in the shoes and debate policy resolutions. Like the activity. No, that's not true. I wait, engage wait, wait. in this round in order to engage in epistemic disobedience as per our role of the ballot. Like, who are you to tell me why I'm sitting in this room debating you right now? Well, okay, wait, actually, I want to talk to you about this epistemic disobedience okay. first. Yeah. So what is the dominant paradigm? What do you mean? What like is the, the dominant paradigm? The dominant paradigm is the one you go for in your case where there are all these threats and the United States needs to be there to protect us, right? Is like the you dominant, talk about okay, straight wait, of wait, Hormuz, wait, wait, you talk wait, about wait, wait. terrorism. Wait, okay. Is the dominant paradigm specific to the United States? What do you mean? So, for example, if we were to prove that another country were to do stuff at a scalar level more imperialist, as you would like to say, does that mean that you no, increase the like, dominant paradigm? Why? Because the argument is not that, like, imperialism is bad and, like, you need to affirm to, like, stay away from imperialism. The argument is that when Isaac and I engage in knowledge-based disobedience, for example, like, when, when in the K we outline the history of, like, oil and like how the United okay. States got to the region, like that knowledge-based disobedience, this kind of knowledge production in the round is more productive than like being policy. What is productive? What does productive mean? What do you, what mean? you mean by it's more productive? Like we say it's better like for the world, for you as debaters, for us as debaters. It's just like a better model for the round, a better paradigm for evaluating the round. Okay, wait. So then let me ask you this. What is the K? What is the alt? So what does the AF world look like? Um. The AF world is yeah. us engaging in this epistemic disobedience, rejecting the status okay. quo. Where in your case have you disobeyed any part of epistemic knowledge? Um, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll just explain it. Like, you're, yeah, okay. Basically, like, there are several ways we get offense. The first way is by producing the knowledge, again, like delineating and mapping the history of oil production, like how yeah. we went in there. All of that knowledge production is office under the role of the ballot. The second one, and this will be done more in rebuttal, but 
when Isaac is going to criticize like the experts that you are falling back on in your case, the military commanders, no, the government, okay, officials, I guess, all okay. of that is disobedience that we will engage in. And that's often under all of the ballot. Okay. But how is it epistemic? Like epistemic just means knowledge based. Right. But okay. Like whatever. we oppose your knowledge systems. Okay. Well, I'm up. So thumbs up if everyone's ready. It's going to start on a roll of the ballot extension, then one off, and then a little bit on their case. You want me to vote the like flow the one off on a new page? Yeah, probably. Okay. Okay, I guess everyone's already good. That being said, let's start. Extend our role of the ballot. Vote for the team who best adopts an attitude of epistemic disobedience. This means you should reject all standards of violence that are in their case. These are just attitudes of threat construction. No there are no possible justifications for violence we inflict on nations on the other side of the globe. Two things count as offense under our role of the ballot. First, historical analysis, and second, investigative analysis, which highlights manipulation of threat narratives and challenges to the monopoly of truth held by traditional security experts. The affirmative upholds this burden best by mapping the lineage of the U.S. empire from Jamestown to 1607 all the way to the manipulation of web searches in the 2019. In doing so, we highlight the nature and extent of counter-terror failing in the Middle East and criticize these scholars who uphold the regime. They don't even read a roll of the ballot. They you, you can already drop them. We only need to in one offensive justification. We advocate for advocacy seals because Jackson in 2012 explains that when you talk about these things, you actually create research that goes against these counter-terrorist activities in the long term. It's the best way to solve back for these issues in the first place. This sequence is all other questions that serve the empire vote path onto their answers. They don't read any, but moreover prefer prefer all of our evidence. They're just citing security experts who have incentive views. Traditional experts have an incentive to maintain the status quo, especially in the context of military statements where threat levels literally determine career prominence and organizational funding. That's Jackson 15. But secondly, it's literally empirically denied. Governments exaggerate threats, failures of, of weapons of mass destruction to, to materialize in Iraq and Libya, where we literally made up threats. Both prove world-ending security threats just aren't real. And third, evidence manipulation. That's Hedges 18. We tell you that government and corporations are systemically censoring challenges to dominate security narratives. This proves both that we are scared people will see our true evidence and provide a psychological explanation for why you would normally prefer their evidence. This is very important because they tell you that it won't matter whether you affirm or negate, which means the only way to actually change things in the real world is to vote for advocacy deals for us. But with that, let's go to the one off. Um, <laughs> Paraphrasing, A, interpretation. Debaters must use direct quotes when reading all evidence and no tags are allowed because they are paraphrased. B, violation, they read text. C, standards, one, ethics. Paraphrasing inevitably leads to argument misrepresentation. It is impossible to accurately reward articles, reword re articles and research papers into a few words and leads to bad research practices. Something much less likely if you use the author's words. Reject misconstruing evidence on face. Second, spinning evidence. Paraphrasing incentivizes teams who spin evidence to give them a strategic advantage and forces teams to debate arguments without true warrants. This skews the ground infinitely within the debate because it allows them to have access to infinite arguments while we are restricted to the topic literature. Third, quality engagement. Paraphrasing encourages lazy research practices where teams only find mediocre evidence and then misconstrued in the round to rather to dig rather than digging deeper into the literature to find the best evidence. This destroys education because debaters are learning less about the topic and researching far less. Four times skew. If we want to know the quote of their evidence, not only does it require us to use prep time while they don't have to, but it also takes longer to read through parts and pa they paraphrase than our quotes. This destroys fairness because it decreases our time to prepare in-round strategy and argumentation. D voters. First norms, a vote for us endorses a positive model of debate. Wins and losses determine the direction of the activity. Teams losing for bad practices incentivizes change in the future. Second, fairness. Everyone needs a fair opportunity to present their own arguments and contest each other's arguments. Are the basis for determining the better side is fundamentally skewed. If one team has 10 players and the other team has five, obviously the team with 10 players is going to win, but it doesn't mean that they were better in the first place. Third, education. The knowledge of a game from rounds is the only thing that lasts outside of the debate. Drop the debater. This round would have been far different without the abuse. Vote on competing interests and no RBIs. With that, let's go on their case and explain how they're threat constructing everything. Starting their first contention about Iran. They already come out clear and explain that they're trying to say that Iran is this crazy threat in the region. But what they don't know is the history because in 1952, the United States literally led a CAA coup into the nation and killed their democratically elected prime minister from the region. Obviously, they have a reason to hate us. But moreover, they, their scenario is so absurd. Iran would never want to close the strait because 70% of their GDP relies on it. Why would they want to give up their economy also? Moreover, let's go on their second hint about terrorism. It's also a threat construction that roots from the root cause of the United States military 
military presence in the region. Because what Bowen in 2018 explains is that U.S. intervention actually increases terrorist acts by 607 percent. The warrant is because of anti-American sentiments. You can use their scenario against them in Iraq. Because what the Wall Street Journal writes is that there are Iraqi militants right now who want the U.S. troops out and they're acting up and causing terrorist actions because of the U.S. troops. Even look at history. There are protests in Iraq because they don't want the troops in. Nobody wants them. It's just threat construction from the beginning. For all of these reasons, we're proud to affirm. Um, before we take prep, can you repeat the first two standards of the paraphrasing theory? Because uh, you were talking pretty fast. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just send it. Wait, you want me to? I'll just send the whole show in. Oh, you can just tell me the first two standards. I think I got the rest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first was ethics. Okay. Second was spinning evidence. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to take running prep. Okay, um, I think that was another like minute, 30 seconds, but yeah. Okay, um, 
I'm gonna do theory first. So I guess the off, is everyone good? Okay, I assume that's a yes. All right. All right. First, defense on those standards, prep skew. We have to call all your cards. It's not unique because quoting authors doesn't solve. You have to call for cards and takes prep to read them and check, to, check for straw man quotes. But second, you could have par paraphrased the NSCA rules allow it. So prep skew is reciprocal. But second, it's on time skew. They say it takes more time. Well, first of all, we'd say it takes more time to read quotes than to paraphrase. You could have paraphrased the NSCA rules allow it. Again, prep skew is reci reciprocal. But second, no, it doesn't. You can just read one sentence summarizing the finding. But then last on misconstruing evidence. It's also response to their ethics argument and spinning evidence because one, it's not unique. Quoting authors doesn't solve. You can just read straw man quotes and insert brackets or skip around a quote and create a so-called quote that isn't at all what the author said but second our cards aren't misconstrued the only reason paraphrasing is bad if they're actually lying about evidence but we aren't we should, you should have read the shell against a team that actually lied about evidence but third is nsca rules check you can look at the evidence found and if our evidence is bad and you can like you can challenge us in this evidence and take the round in our bad evidence by issuing a formal challenge this deters us from misconstruing evidence you don't have to read theory but then on lazy debate if we read the article and put it on our own words we summarize it with a depth of analysis that doesn't encourage lazy debate encourages better debate but then on a counter into Truth teams may paraphrase when citing their evidence. The standards are reading directly directly from a card means you can't can't be as succinct when reading an argument because authors will always write things less concisely than debaters. There are two ways around this. One is reading less arguments. Having more arguments in debate directly which inherently teaches us more, which is more educational. But best second is you can speak faster because public forum is already increasing in speaking speed and approaching policy and Lincoln, Lincoln Douglas speech. Speaking too fast is problematic because it creates a barrier for, for entry to public forum debate, deterring new students from entering the activity, which is a prerequisite to accessibility. First of all, if you're going quickly, I have to go fast because a, they did, so it wouldn't be it would be impossible for me to go slow to cover all their standards and the counter interrupt RBI is good substance, etc. And B, the theory, theory out of the rebuttal inherently forces speed because it forced me to cover the rebuttal to avoid a massive time skew. We only have two minutes in summary to cover six minutes of theory, whereas normally I would have had to cover their case. But then paraphrasing emulates real world practice because academics paraphrase in argumentative papers. Emulating the real world makes debate more educational because the skills we practice are more, more useful in the future. But then vote on education because the lasting benefit we get from debate and it's the reason schools endorse debate. Vote on accessibility because they're prerequisite to expanding the community and gaining new perspectives in debate. They say no, no RBIs. There's absolutely no warrant. They can't respond to this in summary. We get RBIs in theory. First of all, if we win offense in the counter interim and you don't win your offense, we win the round. Three reasons. One is lack of RBIs proliferates useless theory. Without RBIs, everyone will read blippy theory as a no risk of offense to get another potential path to the ballot and every round because they know they won't lose the round if another theme re team responds to theory. Bad theory trades off with substance and impossible to make the uh, substance debate more educational. But second, lack of RBIs makes it impossible to win. Without RBIs, they can they can read theory and second rebuttal, which time crunches the summary by forcing us to cover theory and frontline turns in our case. And at this point, we can go for only substance and only theory is still win. But also RBIs let us only go for theory and summary and still win. And where that, without that, it's a huge time skew and the debate is no longer fair. But third is lack of RBIs creates a massive time skew because they can read blippy, no risk theory with standards that have no explanation. And then we have to spend time in explaining why the blippy standards are wrong. If we want RBIs and we want offense under their counter, if we win the round, if they read theory, they have to come to it. But then, moreover, theory comes before the critique because they have the role of the ballot, i.e. we can't debate if we don't know what the rules of debate are. Theory is a meta debate, which means you have to set the rules of debate before you actually debate. The critique talks about academic ex uh, disobedience, but they mess up when they read theory on it because literally theory is how debate is structured, which precedes any critical arguments it links in to their own role of the ballot. We don't, don't evaluate which comes first of uh, critique or theory because they can't spec in summary because it's way too late for them to bring it up in summary. It's abusive if we do because we literally have no time to respond. We frame the round for you. Meta debate comes first. If we win theory, we win the round. Let's go into the critique anyways. On the first contention about imperialism, we say we we all, like we agree the United States has not been all good. We definitely make mistakes in the past, but the United States is an, 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 an earnest actor in the status quo. We're not trying to colonize. Uh, we're not trying to colonize people. We're combating terror, which is helping people there. But moreover, they com we combated the Nazis in World War II and helped a lot of like solve a lot of gen like, stop a lot of genocides but also talk about capitalism first of all domestically the united states gives like 50 billion dollars in foreign aid then on climate change and stuff china makes the most emissions but then on the role of the ballot again they don't solve the role of the ballot even if you look even if you look to their critique first because they don't actually talk tell you why like talking about this actually makes these problems go away can i get a speech doc on the email chain um yeah i only like typed out the um, paraphrase theory stuff. Is that okay? Yeah, I want that. Thank okay.
Wait, Zoe. Yeah. Do you want me to are, send it or you? Are you okay? Um. Are oh, you I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. It is sent. Okay, let me make sure I get it. Hmm. Yep, I got it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, are you guys ready for cross? Me and myself. Okay. Uh, actually, can we run prep for a little bit? I'm just gonna go call. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Okay. Let, I'll I'll let you know when I call him. Okay. Start prep. Okay, that was good. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, it's good if I take the first question. Mm -hmm. Let me set my timer actually. Uh, okay, yeah, we're good. Starting on theory versus the K, yeah. why does all of your voters about education matter when it doesn't fit under the model of debate? Okay, well, so first of all, epistemic, which is the role of the ballot, has to deal with knowledge, which means that education falls under that, right? But also, well, yeah. obviously, like, talking about education is one of the main reasons that we do debate anyways, right? Is to, like, learn about topics and learn about how to debate, like, policymakers and not to do, like, theory and case because you probably could have done policy if, or LD if you wanted to do that. I, I would say you can do a lot in debate, but the important thing about our model of debate is it's just not all education it's specific education that relates to your arguments where you built up all of these threats that you didn't even go for that talk about okay. how the straight's gonna well, okay first of all let me explain the reason i didn't go for them was because you read theory in like rebuttal which means i didn't have time to do that even going as fast as i could possibly read right but the responses that i would have made is that we're not actually like trying to paint these like people as threat that they're not like, for example, the Balder evidence from our case says that Iran has literally already closed off part of the Gulf in the past, which has hurt developing countries by spiking oil prices, which links into your structural violence argument. But moreover, on terror, it is an actual threat. For example, 9-11. But even though that's U.S. centric, we would say that like millions of people right now, our evidence says, are starving and in humanitarian crisis because terrorists are literally bombing their cities. The United States is the only check on that. Like, I agree with you that like, there might be some things going on, but that's why we tell you that if you look at it, don't just look at the numbers of how many people are dying or how this crazy scenario played out. If you look at the root cause of all of these issues, like you don't interact with, okay. I know you didn't have the time. Well, no, again, the reason I didn't interact is because yeah, I didn't I, have time because you took up all my time making yeah. me read theory, well, right? But I would say the United right. States is not the root cause of all these problems. There are plenty of other colonizers that did the exact same things. And I'm not saying that's okay at all. I agree, it's a really bad thing, but you can't tell me the same things wouldn't have happened with like France, Germany, like Japan. These were all well, other people or other countries that were trying to create empires in the world like, and they like, did a lot of atrocities you can't say they wouldn't have filled in if the united states didn't and moreover i'd argue that the united states that. is an earnest actor in the status quo they're trying to promote democracy even if they're messing up while they're doing it i would say that at least they're trying Maybe. to do the right thing whereas previous empires like the nazis Wait, literally committed like, genocides on purpose can i say one thing like name one nation in the persian gulf that we are promoting democracy in, like saudi arabia bahrain they all are violent authoritarian regimes and we are cracking down and okay. they crack down on okay. all people right okay so i definitely understand that like right now like the united states so the example i'm going to give 
is overthrowing Saddam Hussein, right? Well, so I know, I know, I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say this created a lot of instability in the Middle East. My point, though, is, no. is that in doing so, the United States believed they were creating democracy. I understand yeah, that they created a lot of problems in the process, but you can't tell me that other countries also didn't do the same thing and didn't cause the same problems you talk about. I would also argue that instability existed in the Middle East even prior to the United States overthrowing Saddam Hussein and his entrance after World War II. The Middle East has literally always been at war. I can list you like 10 wars, 10 plus wars that occurred prior to United States entering. So on this time. Um, I'm going to run prep time starting now. Okay, that was a minute 30. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'll send the speech talk. Thank you, it's needed. Okay. Sorry, my laptop has been a bit slow. Let me know when you get it. Will do.
Egal. Yeah, got it. Okay, the order will be all of the theory debate, then on roll of the ballot. Is everyone good? Yeah. Okay. One sec. On the theory debate, as long as I win that my role of the ballot incentivizes the best research and advocacy practices, their voters are irrelevant. On to the counterinterpretation. Only substantive and justified roles of the ballot are voting issues. Counter standards. One, skews are inevitable because of speaking or research skills and institutional access. Two, there's no impact to in-round unfairness accessibility education because it can't be undone. Real education comes from research which my opponents can do after the round regardless of their predictable access to my case at this moment. Three, do you turn? Voting for them disincentivizes research into scholarship that my framework says is the best for challenging systems of oppression. This is the biggest impact on every theory for every theory of the flow four there's no neutrality in security debate discussions are structured by an even distribution of scholarly power from the start you are off affin theory right 15 debates over security are explicitly power led and where some actors are placed in positions of power by virtue of being generally accepted voice of security conventional liberal approaches focused on peaceful dialogue under cooperative ideal speech conditions what this me essentially means is that like one reasonability is a thing on theory and two like under our role of the ballot if anything they're being like unfair because they like adopt the attitude of all these security the experts like this is why you prefer us here they say lack of rvis oh yeah then next they tell you we don't read any words for rvi don't let us do it later she doesn't tell you why we shouldn't be able to do it later so i'm just going to they say lack of rvis proliferates useless theory no they cause a chilling effect and deter debaters from reading theory against abusive positions therefore further perpetuating abuse this turns all of their impacts next they tell you lack of rvis makes it impossible to win no theory is not a nib alternate recourse exists they can just read new theory and wait no one is stopping them that's why they're doing it right now literally next they tell you lack of rvis creates a massive time skew because they can make because we can make blippy unwarranted arguments that's silly judges don't vote no blippy unwarranted arguments if our shell didn't make sense maybe they wouldn't have stood up and spent three minutes responding to it clearly our warrants have some merit to it next rvis are unfair to us in three ways one when they read an rbi and collapse on theory that is unfair to us because we don't get access to all the time we spend on issues and constructive second it allows them to read an abusive case or misconstrued cards and prepper theory debate for months so they beat us later that's definitely like turning on accessibility education etc and like next rvis give them too much power below allowing our opponents to deviate from an already reciprocal arrangement they get two potential theory yes they can read theory or an rbi we don't get that choice because there is nothing for us to rbi this is non-reciprocal because they can just win theory debates via offense and defense extend the role of the ballot they don't provide a counter role of the ballot so you default to us here which is very important because our role of the ballot tells you that you vote for the team that best engages in epistemic disobedience they try to tell you like theory comes before this because like theory establishes rules of debate but they don't worry what kind of rules of debate they establish that make our role of the ballot like inaccessible for anyone in the round which means that you default to role of the ballot like sure theory in some cases when it's impacted out to fairness which they don't do establishes the rules of debate which means like we couldn't put like teams couldn't access the role of the ballot but at the end of the day they don't provide a counter role of the ballot they don't explain why their theory specifically establishes the rules that make our role of the ballot specifically inaccessible which is why you default to our role of the ballot we tell you specifically by dealing in the oil like the origins of oil in our case like and by like opposing the security experts as isaac does in his rebuttal like we win that's jackson 15 like role of the ballot is conceded you default to us here they don't have their own role of the ballot thanks Okay, we're gonna take running prep. Okay.
Um, how much prep do you have left? When you said that, we have like 10 seconds, so we will continue that. Okay, my bad. No problem. Okay, that's all I've prepped. All right. Um, theory. It'll be theory. If I go too fast, I'll give you guys the speech doc. Right afterwards. Okay. Is everyone good? Wait, if you're planning on going too fast, could you just send us this? Well, I don't know how long it's going to be, depending on, like, because I just don't know how much I'm going to get to and how fast I'm going to go. But sure, I'll just give you a speech doc right now. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure, I got you. Let me know when you guys get it. Did you guys get it? Nope. Did you click reply all on the chain? Because um, I know I've had that problem before. <laughs> Check again. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Theory comes before the critique. Note that they can't make any arguments in new summary. That's really important because we give you the reasons for why theory comes before critique. You can't have a role of the ballot if you don't know how the debate is structured. I, it's like playing Monopoly without knowing the rules in the first place. Theory is the rules of debate, which means you can't play the game without, like, you can't read like critical arguments and we can't vote off of debate without knowing those rules. If you don't know what you should evaluate in the debate stage, then you can't A, evaluate their role of the ballot. If there was a rule that roles of ballot were illegal, then you wouldn't debate it. That's why theory comes first. Then on our standards, you can extend this first. They force us to speak faster. Public forums already increasing in speed. And it's like coming to link and Douglas beats so speaking too fast is too problematic because it says a barrier for like new students to get into this activity that's really important and if you're going too quickly if I if I'm going too quickly it's because you guys made me do that but secondly it's because paraphrasing emulates real world practices because this and then secondly it prereqs their norms response because it's like not a good norm in debate if we like it systematically excludes small schools from accessing the debate space and getting education out of it that's really important but then secondly I'm paraphrasing like emulates real world practices we're like having like real world debates here that's really important on their standards first on prime like perhaps you they say that it's like inevitable but literally you can like call for our evidence and you can like check back us back and that like equalizes the playing field so even if it's like somewhat like skewed you're still gonna have like some sort of but like still cutting cards is the same exact outcomes i could literally just cut the word not out of something and have the same exact skew but then on education they want to increase true knowledge in the app world but mess up big time when they read frivolous theory their norms like pro systematically exclude people from like trying to get educational norms in the debate space they don't like i don't know how to interact with two off so i'm systematically excluded and disincentivized from entering into the public forum uh, like from public forum space on the rvi this is really important Important because the uh, negative is winning clearly here. They give three arguments. First, they say that we collapsed the theory, which is unfair to their arguments. Then don't read theory in the first place unless you're sure that we've cheated. That's really important because we tell you that RBS is the only way that we could actually win this race. But then on abusive case or misconstrued evidence, again, that's non-unique. They just cut the word not out of a card. Again, email chains and prep check literally checks back for this. But then on RBIs give too much power. No, if you call us cheaters, then there needs to be repercussions for calling us cheaters, which gives like hedge your bets on this. Plus they call it oppressive, but no, you read it first. So you started this. But then on our standard, 
Sanders first, like lack of RVI proliferates, useless theory, like what they read. They're obviously going to try to collapse this role of the ballot, but they can't do that if they read some sort of frivolous theory, like paraphrase theory, which is really bad because it makes it impossible for us to win, extend the second role of the ballot, which says that lack of RVS makes it impossible for the negative to win this because they could just read theory, which time crunches in summary, like, like literally right now, I don't know how to interact with their case because I have to hedge our bets on this. But secondly, a third on uh, like lack of RVIs, like massive time skew because they could just leave, like blippy notice theory, like what they did. But then they say it's like a nib, like we literally don't have time to do anything else. So this is a necessary but insufficient burden for us if we don't have RVIs. But then you forced us to read counter interps and like forced us to trash arguments. Like we were about to read like two contentions of like Iran, like nuclear, like sorry, Iran oil and like terrorism. But now we no longer have those pieces of offense. So we need an RVI to equalize the playing field. And then on education, it's the most important voting issue because it prereqs their stuff. I.e. if you want to like have a role of the ballot of like education and disobedience, then you have to like help people get into the debate space and they're systematically excluding people. But then their role of the ballot is part of the K. If we win theory, then you don't vote off of the role of the ballot. Moreover, they say we don't respond to the role of ballot. We do. We say it's the role as policymakers to have actual debates and engage in other topical issues. You're voting off of the RBI. It's really clear here. If you don't, then you're basically just meaning AF votes every single time. That's not a good debate norm. Okay, let me call my partner and then we'll start running prep. I'll tell you when. Start prep um, now. Okay, Isaac, you good? How much prep do you all have left? Let me see. I think my partner's from the volume off. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we're out. Sorry. Okay. That's fine.
Okay. You guys ready? Yeah, you guys can, you can get first question. Okay. So you guys say that your form of education coming out of the theory shell is most important. Why, why what oh, was yeah, the this is, okay. this is the most important thing in the run, right? So you, your role of the ballot is as debaters here, we need to like, syst like epistemically like disobey like the norm, like the paradigm, right? Like your, yeah. your form of education comes after we are in the debate space. Our argument about theory is that your debate norms have blocked people out of the debate space in the first place, which means it's a prerequisite to actually oh, hold the like are like are you not debating me right now? Yeah, no. We, yeah. We, so, we, so we specifically are, but our issue is is that if you had hit a team that didn't know how to respond to these arguments, that would be really bad. Like actually, it's very like there are a ton of teams. They would I know still be able to debate know. me. No, no, that's okay. Really you you can no. say that because you know what theory and critiques are, but I have a lot of friends at this tournament that don't know how to do this debate. Like I barely know how to do it. I think it's already unfair that you're doing this to begin with. Well, fairness wasn't the voter in any of your speeches. Literally, yeah, but it, it limits our education because we can't apply yeah. our knowledge. If you make us trash our case and then talk about this frivolous theory because you didn't even call for our evidence, like we didn't misconstrue what? anything, like we'll give you our case. Like, no, like, I don't literally. have time to call for your entire case. No, like, literally, no, literally, let's, let's okay. make time. So we didn't make let's, let's make, let's make time. No, time, time, time. I'm really pissed off about this. Let's make time to call for the case if you are really pissed off. I don't, like, to. I don't think about, theory like, is a voter. Case. Theory is not a voter. It won't if, be in this if round. Like, not you can if, see, wait a second. You can wait, wait a second. So much should, defense. Okay, if theory is not a voter, then don't read theory. Yeah, then don't read theory. Exactly. And then don't read a voter. Like, you can see, you can see so much defense from my summary. For example, I tell you that the describe are inevitable because of things like institutional no, access we, we literally said that like sure skews are like inevitable but we can check yeah. back we can check back for them by doing stuff like checking you can back. because listen you're checking you're checking back for one skew and i tell you there are many and they are inevitable right like you could see terminal defense on your shell no, you're not getting any offense concede, here and we don't see terminal defense like on our shell. like listen like you read a lot of like you read a lot of like general evidence like Oh, like in general, theory establishes rules of debate, which should preclude role of the ballot. But like in this round, never have you ever warranted why specifically your theory precludes access to my role of the ballot. We have literally have issue. just told you about it. It's because our theory starts setting educational norms before we get into the debate space. Why do you need educational norms to debate my role of the ballot? Okay, like, let's, let's, okay, let's, okay. Dude, here's, here's a real life example, right? I had a C1 and C2 of straight up four moves and yeah. uh like terrorism right you had a yeah. case about like like Boy. rejecting like epistemic norms right we didn't learn a damn thing about either thing because you read theory right where is the education no i think i learned wait okay first of all a hey, couple things education. one one like education does not come before of the ballot like personally like i say you, only again, things again, this, is the the monopoly. this is the monopoly example you can't explore different strategies to play monopoly your monopoly the, exactly if we don't know how to play monopoly your monopoly example is pre-written for a shell that impacts out to fairness like i'm sorry you're reading generic evidence for theory that doesn't apply to your shell it's not applicable okay. to your vote sorry one thing i would really appreciate if you would stop like attacking us and telling I'm us not. that like our defense doesn't apply or like you have terminal I, I, defense so, like i just want you to respond to our argumentation sorry, can i can i respond yeah. i just want you to respond to our questions in crossfire rather than saying that like you can't access that anyways i just feel like it's kind of rude okay sorry i wasn't timing cross is that it yeah, that was it. We okay. three ten. Yeah, I'm just gonna circle everything and then we'll go. Okay, is I'll I'll signpost, but it's just gonna start on theory. Is thumbs up. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Just 
starting the RVI debate, we tell you that the more that we read theory, that the more that the RVIs actually get voted in, the more that people who have an incentive to not read theory when abuses actually occur. They just say it's useless theory, but realize that our norms are set for the future. We tell you that if you have an RVI in the first place, it means that it deters future debate, future abuse where people actually need to run theory in the first place. But secondly, we tell you that they can always read new theory to advocate against their responses. They just say that people will just read blippy no risk theory. But our argument is that they could have read another shell and they could have always argued that our theory was unwarranted. The reason why they had to respond to it was because it wasn't, it was justified. Moreover, they say that education is the most important and their warrant is because it becomes it becomes, it becomes before the debate space. But it doesn't matter whether the education becomes comes before or during the debate space. It just matters on the value of education. That's why you prefer us on the Jackson 15 evidence. Go to our rolls about where we tell you that you should <clears throat> you show epistemic disobedience to the dominant security paradigms that take over our society right now. They say that education is important, but realize that the only education that their case would have brought in you, the only education that this round would have brought in you was threat construction education that teaches nothing in the real world. It just teaches us the dominant security paradigm. That's why you're actually going to vote for us because we tell you that you need to reject the status quo, reject the norms that are going on right now. We tell you that if you extend our role of the ballot and you reject all these norms, you get Jackson 15 who explains that there are advocacy skills in society when you, re when you reject these norms and you actually try and advocate against the counter terrorist activities that are going on in the Middle East. Moreover, go on to what Vlad said in his summary on the counter interp. We say that skews are going to be inevitable no matter what. If that takes away accessibility because there's always going to be some form of unfairness in the round. In fact, Rizoven explains that this debate would have been unfair. BC explains that security debates always have, always have a significant disadvantage to our side because the military has so much evidence backing them in the first place. Moreover, they, we tell you that education comes before research because our education is more valuable in the real world because it's actually going to be used to stop these actions in the first place. Their theory is just about norms where people should be reading theory because it's actually a good thing. Moreover, they say, <clears throat> moreover, we tell you that it turns research into challenging systems of oppression. They never interact with us at all. You, you vote for the reasons you prefer our role of the ballot. We tell you that because of these advocacy skills, we actually have an impact that goes into the real world. We actually can change education from the root cause and vote for our model of debate. They don't read anything else. They just say policymakers, but they bring that in second summary. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't interact with our role of the ballot at all. All right. Um, is everyone good? Okay. All right. At the top, theory comes before critiques because you can't have a role about if you don't know how to debate the structure. It's like playing Monopoly without knowing the rules. If you don't know how you should evaluate the debate space, then you can't evaluate the role of the ballot. For example, if there was a rule that, like, that evaluated by theory that role of the ballots were illegal, then you couldn't debate it. That means if we win theory, we win the round because they can't access their critique. Then on their standards, one, they, for, they force us to speak faster. They never respond to this throughout the entire round. Public forum is already increasing in speaking speed. It's approaching policy and Lincoln Douglas, Lincoln Douglas levels. Speaking too fast is problematic because it creates a barrier to entry for other new debaters. Moreover, this is not a um, more I have to go fast because one, they did, but also it's impossible for me to go slowly because I can't cover everything. But second, the your average battle forces me to like spread all these things and my partner had to respond to it. But then also paraphrasing, I mean, like real world practice because academic practice, paraphrasing and argumentative papers. They never responded to either of these standards. These are both offense for us, but moreover on their standards, on time, time, and so you literally call for our evidence. We never, we never miscut any of their cards. If they thought we were cheating, they should have made sure we were cheating first. There should be a, like a harm for them for calling us cheaters without actually have any evidence. They didn't even try to call for any of our evidence. But moreover, on education, we want to increase true knowledge in the app, but they mess this big time up when they're frivolous theory. They normally promote systematically exclude people from entering the debate space because they don't know how to interact with too often case turns. Excuse it, the skews are inevitable. Let's make a fair, let's make the debate as fair as possible. But also I'd rather add access to the debate space and have it than have it be unfair and they never get access to begin with. That's why access to education are the most important things in this round to prereq every single thing they read. They forced us to read a counter interim and force us to trash our arts. If they wanted to call for our case, they should have done that already. But moreover, this is like this is a really silly debate. If they wanted to talk about this, they should have done it on like Facebook or something. They don't have to make this about the debate space. But then RVIs, they don't respond to any of our things. One is RVIs proliferates useless theory because that means that um, useless theory, which is exactly what they're doing. But second, it makes it impossible to win because we don't have any time to do anything else. They like mess up all their debate. But last, we'd say the lack of RVIs creates a massive time skew uh, because uh, it creates a massive time skew because then we have to use up all our time. But let's take a step back in the debate space and realize they try to catch us off guard and read an argument they thought they could win because we wouldn't know how to respond. In doing so, they deter people from accessing the debate space we say this is the most education is the most important thing this round if small school debaters and other people who don't know how to respond can't access the debate space which they never respond to we should win the round good round good round okay um give me like five minutes um do we need to go to a different room if the next round's here um I hey think... saturn can you hear me yes saturn still here? yeah yeah. you're the host right you're the host right now so you have the ability to create a breakout room and you're also streaming 
so I'm not sure how that affects it. Um, if we um, create a breakout room, would that mess up your streaming? If I what? Sorry. Are, are you're streaming this round, right? That's why you're in here. Yes. Uh, if we created a breakout room, would that mess that up? Do you know? I'm not a hundred percent sure. All I know is that YouTube recently changed their thing. So if I okay. move, if I move if I end the room or if, if since I am the host, if I end the meeting, um, then it'll end the stream. I think if I leave it as well, it might. But I think that's all I know. Okay. I'm just going to let Tab know that this flight one debate is going to take a little longer and y'all should just try to wrap up promptly. Okay. And then after they're done, I'll just like leave the room just so the stream can end. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, can everyone hear me? All right, I'm just gonna do this as quickly as possible because I know there's another round, um, but I have a feeling they're gonna be questions. So after this, if you wanna just like Facebook message me um, with additional questions, it's probably a good idea because uh, this round got kind of messy. Um, so basically just, I vote neg. Um, and what I do is I start with this idea of what comes first, the shell or the K. Um, in terms of the role of the ballot argument. And um, I don't think there's enough work done in final focus on why the role of the ballot comes before the shell or at least at the same level. So I default to I evaluate theory first before I can evaluate role of the ballot. And Isaac, I do think you link in this role of the ballot argument into the theory shell, but the problem is, is you like link it into your own interpretation, which isn't extended in final focus. Um, I think the problem is, is that in second final focus, there's a lot of time spent on like no RVIs and then you spend a lot of time on their counter interp, but I never explicitly hear your own interpretation and like any link back to what they did problematically. And I think that's just kind of a problem throughout the round is you get really stuck in this idea of like education, but we don't like go back to the violations at all and the violations aren't tied to um, the like education standard at the end of the debate. Um, so then I kind of just have this one like neg interp about education. I do think it's fair that a lot of these like responses you read do seem rooted in fairness and you go for like an education voter. But at the end of the debate, I have this idea of this neg argument about like accessibility and education only happens if people are like in the debate space at all. Um, I think it would have been smarter to initially frame this interpretation under fairness, not under education, but you go for education. I buy that education can't happen um, unless there's a round happening. So then the only thing that I really have that relates to that is this idea of like the role of the ballot says that education that would be happening is bad, which I do think is true. But insofar as like you don't have an interp extended, I buy their interp and at least the education is happening at all. Like even if the education is bad, I just don't think that that like role of the ballot is weighed out enough that I kind of have to vote neg there. Cool. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yeah, if you have questions, just message me. I'm happy to talk about it further, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
All right. Are all the participants for flight be here? Uh, Theo, I'm gonna, is it okay if I give the judge or you the host abilities and then leave so that I can end the stream? Yeah, yep. Give me the host ability. Okay. I don't see all the participants. Okay, I'm gonna leave now. All right, good luck, y'all. Bye, Saturn. Uh, hello, Lori. Hi. Um, so we are missing from 108. We're missing Do our we have debaters. both atomic. Oh, does everybody? Uh -oh. I th you're an ob observer who we have? We have an observer? No, I, I can't hear you. Sorry, Sorry we were renaming. Were oh, so you're participants. Okay, so we have, we have one team. Okay, I will find Fairmont Prep AA and I will be back. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Hey, um, so the stream is still running. Um, I'm going to try doing this and see if this works. Um, Lori, is it okay if you can give me hosting abilities and then I'll end the chat? Yes, I'll end it on, let me try to do that. Um, I don't apparently, I don't think I have hosting abilities. Okay. They were given to somebody else from Tab. Okay, cool. And then can the person in Tab then, or Theo, I think you're still in here. Um, can you give me hosting abilities again? And then I'll end it and then everyone can like rejoin because it is still streaming. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the host. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, in the meantime, do we have all the participants here? Um, and then, Lori, can you make me um, host? And then, um, I hate to. I think this is the this is the only way to end the stream. But like, I can end the room, and then you all can rejoin. That's fine. I still don't have a, under my pull down hosting ability, so I, it's it was given to somebody other than me. It says that you're the host now. Let me, I might need to, hold on. Uh, were we moved to 122? Yeah, we got an email saying that we're moved to 122. Okay, perfect. And then you all can do that. And then, um, all right, cool. 122 is still in round because I don't know. There's something going on in that round. Oh. Okay. Did uh, Fairmont AA make it here? Yeah, we're here. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Uh, Thea. Yeah. What's up? Sorry. Um, we need to end the room to like stop the stream because YouTube changed it. So I was thinking like if we okay. end the room and then people just rejoin to end the stream, we can do that. Okay. Uh, does everyone understand that? All right, cool. Thanks, y'all. Good luck. All right. Uh, Theo, you need to end it. Sorry. <laughs> And Theo, if you end the room, it'll it'll end the stream.
Do we have the Flight B 108 folks back here yet? Um, yeah, Fairmont and Potomac. Make sure to rename yourselves. Okay. Uh, Potomac AA, are you here? Potomac AA, are you here? Yeah, we are. Okay, so we have both debaters from Potomac and Fairmont, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, is someone in tab here?
Um, Fairmont Prep Observer, can you give me hosting abilities? Um, just hover over my name and then they should hit the three bubbles and then do it from there. Cool. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to end this meeting just to end the stream. And then if you all can like rejoin again, I'm sorry I keep doing this. It's just we need to end the stream. Um, but if that's cool with you all. All right, cool. I'm going to end this meeting and then I should end the stream. All right, good luck, you all.